at it again once again you know what it is it's the biggest the dopest the freshest the sickest the illest anytime we're showing your tv screens it's tvd baby it's the beat down it's your boy mangaliso maslera aka l4 aka l fizzle welcome to it it's the top 10 hottest music videos from all over the world wherever the turn up is we box it up fly it down to a swatini then we unbox it at 8 p.m right here on swazi tv every saturday and today we're doing things a bit different, man. You know, as you can see, I'm not where I usually am. Shout out to Solanis. I'm out here at what will be the last major event to happen in this space. This is the Swazi Jive HQ, the Swazi Jive headquarters. And uh, big news came out about a week ago that Swazi Jive is making a whole lot of changes to what's happening, especially with Hypnotic and the studio and the old HQ. So. I had to make a special. I had to come through and get the full scoop, man. The tweets weren't enough. The Facebook post wasn't enough. I was like, nah, I want you to sit down with me and tell me exactly what happened. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be unpacking everything with the one and only Sakile. And of course, Lo. What's happening, fellas? We are here. So What's going on? Thank you for having so us. So the fam. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's a pleasure. We're good, man. Uh, very weird time, but we're great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to get right into it. I just want to, before we get into it, before we unpack everything, I just want to know what headspace you guys are at right now with all these changes that are happening. Oh, well, the future is bright. You know, there's people that work as hard as us always have a chance to win. And so it's, it's a lot of people may look at it negative, but it's positive. You know, let's go. Let's go. That's the headspace we're in. Go. That's it. For those who haven't seen the Facebook and the Twitter, Sakile, what yes. are these changes that I'm talking about? What's going on? Uh, it's just growth, man. We, we're forcing ourselves out the box. We created ourselves. I think we've done as much as we can in the environment, considering the resources we have. Uh, so we literally expanding, and expansion actually means taking away some properties from Eswatini, which is very hurtful. There's a lot of reasons behind it. There's a lot of factors. It's very political, but we're not interested in that. Uh, I think our fans will follow us wherever we go. Our fans are... are are ready uh, to support us whatever we do so that's our only focus right now yeah so in short because i know you yeah you <laughs> feel philosophical about it you guys are leaving the hq and uh there's also another big change i want to talk about in terms yeah. of leaving especially within the country but i want to kick off the show with the first video of the day they won't be back to sit down with the big boys from swazi jai we'll be right back Never slipping on my conscience, you bring the cookie back. I don't need it, I don't cough back. Girl, you wrote it good, hope you got your license. Still underage, but already on a high pace. Living like a savage, you ain't living 21 yet. Sipping on the beverage, then the royal crew, another J. Get high, no Red Bull. Sit to jump us and take it, take it to the bedroom. Now it's going on again. All the hate was a pretense, just in front of your friends. We cannot be like that. Now you're smiling like damn. You are threatening the way. How I'm feeling right back. I don't need to fall over again for you. I don't need to fall over again for you. Cause you just got me sitting here drinking all night. Thinking about you and I hope you're alright. So I'm thinking. Dropping you a text, how you did me like that? I need a rematch. We can start up at the show. I got you a free pass. I don't really like this, and you can sit here on my lap. I got scattered on some ice. Don't worry about the ducks who hum, but not me, Pella. This is my TBD, baby. We're still out here. You know what it is? It's the big down with your boy Alfizo. And of course, I'm not alone. I'm with Sakile SK, and of course, Lisa L.O. Does everyone else actually call you Lisa L.O.? No, it's, 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 it's,
I'm low, but everyone in Swaziland calls me LO. LO. So I just accept it. Just, you know, <laughs> Maybe if they know the story behind the name. Ah, there is no real story. It's just a nickname. You know? Ah, you're, you're LO then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just accept that you're LO. Yeah, you know, so it's whatever the fans want to call me, it's all right. Yeah. yeah. It's fine with me. Fellas, you guys have a story to tell um, coming through from t shirt selling yes. at Waterford. Yeah. Um, small events at theater club at that school. Yeah. I just want to know your description of this journey that's come now to what some may seem, as you said, some may look at the end. Mm -hmm. How yeah. can you describe this long journey uh, that you guys have gone through? Very uh, interesting. Uh, I think we've been very blessed to go from nothing, literally just having ideas, to making such an impact, not only in our lives, but other people's lives. You know, uh, when, when I started the brand in high school, uh, I definitely had all these dreams, but I didn't think it would grow at such a quick rate. You know, from selling t-shirts at the tuck shop, selling noodles, um, you know, from that hustle to doing shows at theater club where 50, 100 people come, 200, 700, to eventually owning uh, event properties and venues as big as Sky Lounge and Hypnotic uh, within eight years. Um, it's definitely a blessing and uh, you know if you don't believe in God's power just look at our lives you know what I'm saying uh, not only are we big in Swaziland but I just came from a trip uh, I was in America for three weeks working with other promoters working on other festivals as Swazi Jive uh, in South Africa we're doing the same thing so you know it just comes to you know it proves the fact that your dreams are valid regardless of how small you think it is when you get started or you know, you can't discourage yourself or talk yourself out of it at the beginning, you know. Uh, humble beginnings, I think it's in the Bible as well that humble beginnings are very important and that's definitely our story. You know, now we're at the top. <laughs> and niggas can't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody mad. Everybody mad, but it's cool. No, um, Sakila's obviously been in the, the limelight on the out there mm. being the founder and CEO of Solid Child. Mm. You recently in the, in the last couple of years have come out as well, you know, more publicly, but mm. it's not because you just got introduced to the scene. No. You've been part of the team and also behind the scenes yeah. uh, in terms of what Solid Child artists have been doing. You maybe want to tell us what <coughs> Lo has been doing before coming out and being announced as Solid Child music president. Oh, well, I started working with uh, Sakile long time. I even remember First time using the studio at school. He was a uh, head of the studio. What, what, what was yeah, it? yeah. I was a bully. I, I used to <laughs> pick who used to use the studio. Yeah, and I was just and always shining. So <laughs> I was just always good. So I just always got. You in form two? Yeah, I think form two, form three. I was in form four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. I was, from then, from that moment on, we just kept working, and um, even in we even saw a f recent Facebook post in 2012, and I just posted so as Jack. Yeah. Even back then, you know, it was gang, gang, it was team. The team always comes first, you know. So my journey, my journey with Sosa Jive comes from, comes from just the love of music. That's, that's how we met, you know, that's how it grew. And now, you know, we're doing more stuff to do with the music, but also in the industry, you know, as entrepreneurs as well. We, we've been in this uh, struggling together, winning as well, for how many years now? Yeah. Our whole lives we've been winning. <laughs> true, true. It's been long. It's been yeah, long, yeah. yeah. But yeah, the artist is where I usually come in. I've been in the background producing, mixing for all the Swazi Jive artists before I even came to the forefront to let you guys know that, okay, now I'm you know, showing myself. But uh, that, that just came from growth and change in our lives, saying now we're just reaching a new level. So we have to do new things as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. They've got all the positives, but we also want to look at the negatives, man. We ain't trying to out here butt kissing. So we're going to talk about all of that uh, after this song right here.
D, baby, we're still out here. You know what it is. Remember, hit us up on Facebook and on Twitter. On Twitter, it's at the Beatdown TV, and then on Facebook, it is the Beatdown. But if you're not look, trying to search and scroll, just go onto your browser and type www.facebook.com stroke the Beatdown TV. That takes you straight to the page. Still out here for those who joined us. Where you been? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> still out here with Sakide and Lo. We're talking about. Uh, the changes that Swazjab is going through right now, arguably one of the biggest entities in the entertainment industry for the past, I don't know how many years. Uh, two young men here who have been at the forefront of, of something that's been great. But besides the hypnotic festival, I was talking to Lo before the break about uh, the, the stuff he's been doing behind the scenes, which is a lot of the production um, that, 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 that Swazjab has as artist. Now, a lot of people talk, a lot of people have different opinions, so I always want to hear things from the horse's mouth. Um, you've had artists and some of them have left um, from the very first one you dropped, which was the pair of um, YNV, yeah. you know, to Bumnandi and things like that. Yeah. What's, what's happened with the artists that have come and gone? Oh, well, it's, it's, a lot of it is uh, just different journeys, different paths, you know, different perspectives. It's, it's nothing negative. It's just other people want to go different ways and grow their own brand in certain ways that we aren't looking to do. Okay. So it's, it's, not, it's not anything negative, it's just growth. And we, we're not going to close you off to your own personal growth. Yeah. So we're going to let you, let you explore yourself and grow. We're not here to stifle you and stop you, we're here to help you. So with all that, you know, it's always positive. You see, we still know each other, we still talk. So it's, it's not anything negative. Yeah. yeah, just to add on that, mind you, the way Lowe's putting it right now is obviously because we've grown as well. So in retrospect, that's how we see it. In the moment, there's definitely some animosity that was felt both ways because you, you young people, you dream together, you have plans, and then all of a sudden your plans don't work. You know, so the initial, uh, I think, reaction is, ah, but so-and-so doesn't have my back or so-and-so doesn't have my back. So I think that's where the stories get interesting for the general public, that maybe there was a fight or anything like that. But in life in general, even with friends from high school, regardless of people you work with, they get to, you get to that point where for your growth, you have to leave certain people behind or they have to leave you behind, you know. Uh, and it's unfortunate that uh, some of these guys that I've worked with were some of the most talented guys this country's produced, you know, um, and we had a certain vision for them and that their own vision. And I still, to this day, believe, I wish we stuck together. Even when I see them now, I'd be like, dog, if we're just stuck together, you know? Uh, but I'm sure they're doing well in their own right, according to their standards. Um, uh, so I think it's all love from my side. bring that up, because yeah. I want to know, you're, you're, you're still young. Yeah. You've been doing this, you're young people. You know, yeah. You're learning as you go. Now, looking back at the artists you've had, the, 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 the decisions you've made, in terms of such like music, you know, yeah. what are some of the things you would say? Maybe probably sh we shouldn't have done that mm. with our artists, or we should have done this. When you look back now, you go, yo, you know, for instance, because you have like some notable things. Yeah, uh, Cool Bus came out, yeah. Rock the Nation. Yeah, uh, Nine was a pretty, was well, a really dope um, mixtape. Yeah, um, Tendon has also mm. um, had a, a collaboration yeah. with a South African artist at, at a time where Overload, 2013, you know, Overload, yeah. also, also a dope song. Now, when you look back at all these things that you did, yeah. do, do you have some regrets or some, where some, ah, I probably should have done that? Uh, I'll let Lo answer that, but my only regret and something we're only learning maybe the last few years is putting people in the spotlight too quickly. Mm. Uh, I think we, we rushed the process in terms of getting people known, getting the music out there, and not, not actually developing them on a personal level. This life comes with a lot of public pressure. There's pressure from home, there's pressure from your friends, there's pressure at school, you know, especially because we're all young. And now you have to be producing at a level where you're competing with guys that don't have pressure from home, they don't have school, you know. The moment you release a song and you're 18, 19 right now, you're competing with Aries and Nasty C by default, uh, whether you like it or not. You know, and we would rush and, and put people out there and then they wouldn't maybe put in the effort that we thought was required or put in the time uh, that they knew they needed to put in, you know. Um, definitely a big regret and also just gauging how, how much people want it. Um, 
it takes time to realize if someone's really committed. Uh, we, we sometimes we put people in the spotlight, got the features, uh, did the big records, and then you realize that maybe they're not in it as 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 much as we are. You know, uh, people change. You know, and 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 at the time we're working without contracts, so no one had any obligations to do anything. You know, you one day you release a big song, and then the next day is ish. I have to go to. Uh, I want to go to Smunya Fair, ish, yeah, I'm tired, you know, all those things. And if any, any young person is watching, they want to start a record label, that's the reason big labels have contracts. That's why there's obligations. You have to release four singles with us, five albums. It's because people change and you want to guy, uh, guard the business, secure the business from those uh, changes in tastes, interests, habituals, whatever. You want to make sure that if you're developing an artist, they'll carry it right through you know uh so yeah well i think he answered most of it but uh you know adding on to uh what he's saying the regrets it's not necessarily that we regret anything but those are lessons learned now yeah you know i think it's important that in, in, whatever business it is or whatever you're doing in your life you learn from the mistakes or whatever happens so that in the future you'd be more prepared you know to do whatever you want to do so for me, it's, I don't really like dwelling on, on, the, on whatever we regret. I want to learn from it and not make those mistakes again you know, and be strong with it. But, so it's not, I don't regret much. Yeah, yeah fellas, I really want to, because we're talking to the young person here, I want to talk more about the stuff that you've done as, the, as, the, as the young people and stuff that you continue to do. But after this jam right here, we'll be right back. <laughs> you know what they're doing? What they're doing? Tell us. Smart. Yes. 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 Me search the trend, I'm a different. Me going in for the money, but rent. Me a freelancer, me know the chance. And if you play this song, me are the dancer. Me like the ups, me no balance. The ATM, me put me the number, number. Always on top, I was never under. Lost my time, all of them, them wonder. See, already all of them surrender. Cause them can't defend the gender. Me not feel them from Cape to Vendor. I'm a number one fireman, we stand up. Who could push my way to London or to Kingston? Oh, my puto, me are the ruler. Very straight and petty straight, some say I'm a ruler. TBD, baby. This year we saw the seventh edition. It's the seventh, right? Mm -hmm. It's the seventh edition of one of the biggest uh, youth festivals in the country and longest running, um, as far as I know. I stand to be corrected. The Hypnotic Festival. We saw it start out, you know, as a small festival. It was a little small, though. <laughs> a thousand yeah. is pretty small compared to it now, you know? Yeah, but at so, the time, you know. I, that was lit. <laughs> at, the, at the time, it was like, wow, it was a big start. Yeah, it was. But How that, old were you guys at the time? Uh, what was I? Mm -hmm. I forgot. Yeah, 17, 18? 18. I yeah. was 16 then. Yeah, I was really young. Wait, so at 18, you guys 18. had AKA, yeah. you had KO, you had Big Nas, you yeah. had all these people, and you're signing contracts with them. <laughs> Big boys. Why, why, would, why would that thought, how does that thought even come to you? It, uh, when God places a vision, man, in your heart, we all have those moments where you, you have a moment of intuition and mm -hmm. you know you get a hunch to do something i think i just believed in that that i could do this and and i just started doing the research on how to get a hold of these people or put myself in the right space you know so at the time it didn't seem like a challenge it just seemed like what i should be doing so while my friends were going home for holiday i was literally asking my parents if i could go to Joburg, you know which seemed weird to them like we are pictures you know, and I was like, I, I have this idea, da 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 da. Uh, and then the right people start falling into your life, just like how it always happens when you trust yourself. Uh, you know, and people started coming in to say, oh, I know so and so, I know this manager, or I can take you to this place. Uh, hence, how that's how we reached all these stars at the time. You know, Keenan, aka, uh, who had just dropped his mixtape. Uh, you know, didn't have many hit singles, uh, and then I booked him. And we met and we spoke about his dream of being a big rapper. And that year he won his first uh, South African Music Award, you know, and Alter Ego was just a big deal. So by the time Hypnotic happened, he was a star, 
you know what I'm saying? And we, I remember we sat at Azulini Spur, talking about our vision for his career, vision for the festival. And we had a great moment this year after everything that's happened. We're sitting at the Royal Villas looking back like, man, we did it, you know? Uh, those, those moments are priceless, considering we trusted something that was not tangible. You know, it was deep in our hearts and in our souls. And then now everyone's seeing it. It's, it's a pretty amazing experience, yeah. It's, it's good when you can have stories like that, that you can, um, you know, when you, when you tell a story of how yeah. you've got somewhere and yeah. you have different opinions. Like I said, everyone has a different opinion. Yeah. And I love hearing the truth. Yeah. So when you, have a st when you have stories like that, moments like that, it, it, it makes the story more believable, you know, because yeah. obviously for you, uh, being in the public eye as the Swazi Chai face, yeah. you know, you, you've, you've dealt with quite a lot of um, negative, not publicity per se, but tweets, Facebook, people talking, you know, yeah. others even doubting that you did any of this, you know, I think wow, a, a, a term, that's, that's a a term that, that, that I could <laughs> use um, was, was uh, it's just, a, 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 it's just a, a rich boy using his parents. That would be nice, that would be yeah, nice. Really yeah. nice. <laughs> actually, that would be great. I'd enjoy that, actually. Because <laughs> that's, that's the general, that's the yeah. general. I'll style. take it, I take it as a compliment. Mm. The moment people see a young black person and don't believe they can do such great work, it shows their limitations, it, it exposes their beliefs on what a young black person can achieve, not mine. It doesn't reflect anything about me at all. Yeah. So I'm, I just listen, I'm like, cool, bro. You believe you can't do it? I was 21 and I, you know, blowing half a million. And I'm okay with that. And I, I, I started meeting people that are in that space and I wanted more. And if you don't think that's possible for you, that's cool. It doesn't affect what I'm doing or the growth of my business or my success, you know? So. Yeah, I, I think that's what helps me deal with, with the negativity. Uh, but we do have moments. I think, I don't know what low things, but I, I've had my cases of anxiety. You can go through depression. And unfortunately, those are things that um, the media won't report. Nobody cares what, what you're going through mentally, emotionally, what your family is going through. Uh, they just want the, the juice, the spice, you know, the lineup. You know, how much is a ticket? Uh, how I feel when I wake up in the morning and there's two pages of lies or you know, just a mistake we made or, you know, uh, you learn how cold the world is. And Out of interest, what's yeah. the biggest lie that's been told about you? The biggest, arrogant, that I'm arrogant. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't know, man, I've heard, I've heard so much stuff. So many things. I've heard so much stuff, all the way to Drug dealing. At some point, people don't yeah. understand wow. how we're financing. Yeah, people would come here and be like, "Are you guys dealing drugs?" Yeah. It's like, no, we're dealing music. Someone yeah. pushed me for a job. Yeah, because yeah. thought I was a drug dealer. Yeah, like, you, there's no way you guys. It's are very doing interesting. This. So it's just it's that's crazy. people's limitations of 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 what a a black young person can do. Scare me sometimes, you know. Uh, but luckily, we've managed to put ourselves in spaces where uh, we've seen other young black people do even more things than us. Uh, wait, like what we are doing is nothing. So we're always around those people, learning from them. We're literally like begging them for knowledge, you know. So that's the only thing that's keeping us moving. You're obviously doing this for yourself, but do you okay. ever feel the pressure with all these things being said about you that yeah. that you read about, you hear about? Yeah. Do you all do you ever, do you ever feel the pressure to try and prove yourself? Because like. Yeah. We're, we're living in a time where if I say you can be the next Akita, someone will answer, oh, I can't, I don't have rich, rich, rich parents, yeah. or oh, I don't sell drugs like them. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you feel the pressure to go, no guys, but this is how it's happening, or believe me, do you feel that pressure at any point? <clears throat> I, I wouldn't necessarily call it pressure, but I, I did go through a point in my life where I wanted to prove a point, uh, which is very unhealthy. Um, you don't get the best results out of yourself. Uh, you, you're basically killing yourself. And one of the reasons I used to start blogging more often, started my website, and one of the main reasons I'm writing a book is to tell the story. Um, unfortunately for some people, they're only catching up now, but there are those kids that grew up with us. When I did Headcount, way before Hypnotic, the kids were still 12, 13 years old. Uh, nine years later, you know, these people are 21, 22, 23. So there's people who've grown with the brand uh, and stayed loyal to us without really understanding the story behind it. Those are the people I'm interested in. 
there will be people who constantly doubt. Uh, even if they will read my book, they will see this interview, they will meet me live and still go, ah, <laughs> I no mang allowed. You know? So then you can't, that's why I don't get into arguments with people that are unwilling to change their mind. Understand? The reason we engage in conversation is to feed each other information so you are willing to change your stance on something. The moment I realize someone's not willing to change their mind, there's no reason for us to talk. You've made up your mind. Why are we arguing? You understand? And a lot of the fans are open-minded, are willing to understand the good and the bad. Then there's the people who just made up their minds about us. I have absolutely no interest in, in, in even attempting because it's a lose-lose. It takes up my time, uh, you know, and I'm feeding into their bad energy. Um, it's, not, it's, not how we, it's not how we work around here. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll take a jam, and then afterwards, I want to talk about the ups and downs of hypnotic. Where to from here? You know, hypnotic might not be in the country next year. We'll talk about that and so much more after this. I'm on my way to school, it's a normal day Wasn't messing up it just Kinda took a little while for me to stray from all my innocence hey. I had a crush on this girl And she was fine, she had my smile on reflex She knew I liked her cause I stared every day I was alone, I couldn't share my feelings you're with 16, I'm an older nigga on my way to studio, it's a working day. I'm always getting high, making music bitches on my mind, I think I lost my innocence. Hey, hey. but I got my fans right, I got my crutch on my set right, I got no meme in the all sets, see the fans that are all mine. Hey. I can trust her with my fan call, she goes spend my mind until the last time. the perfect time to call ya? Don't tell a lot of people since I was a kid, it's always been my phobia. I think I heard my phone buzz. Some girl from primary, it's funny how we never really used to talk. So don't tell a lot of people. Don't tell a lot of people. It's the beat down, it's your boy Alfisel out here with SK and Low. So as a jive, I know uh I'm talking to prison right now. I know a lot of artists look at the I think it's called a catalogue, right? Mm. The catalog, see what what you, what what you've done. Listen to your stuff. Are you guys looking to find, sign any new artists real quick or no? I mean, if your talent is just undeniable, sure. Yeah. You know, it's, it's you can see with the artists we have now, it's with more focus on talent rather than hype or anything like that. So for us, I don't I don't care how many followers you have or you know how how hype you are. I start with the music because that's the first touch point that that I care about. That's how I connect with you. That's the first way I'll get to grow with you. But if, it, but if it's just about the hype and all that, it's not, it's not necessarily what we do since we develop artists here. We're not taking the big label approach where we just take already established artists and just push them and manage them. No, we want to take talent and nurture it and create superstars. So, the, so that we can, as Swaziland also says, as what in, we have these superstars that we have created. You know, and we brought them up. Not someone else, not South Africa, not... No, we did it ourselves. So that's how we approach the artist curation process, you know, so... If you got some talent that you, that's beyond amazing, yeah, hit us up. Mm. It's beyond up. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you, wanna, you wanna underline that? I have to yeah, underline yeah. that. <laughs> well, speaking about artists, earlier I asked you about the artists that have come and go. Mm. Another thing that, that's, that's also evident, especially um, in terms of people who follow the journey follow you guys so the jive and what's been going on there's also been a lot of changes around you besides the the musicians and whatever but the, the team's been changing as well yeah is that is the same is it the same answer for for that in terms of people who've come and go uh to a large extent yes i think the principle is the same people going through changes but i i would hate to to blame everything on people changing i think there's definitely been mismanagement on our side just because we didn't know better at the time so our staff turnover at some point was horrible we we're losing people 
uh, quicker than we could replace them. Um, and that's when I learned to start an organizational culture. That's why we're in such a beautiful space right now. I learned for people to give their best, what type of environment they need to be in, what type of salaries they need to be earning. Nobody taught us those things. I went to business school my whole life, but there's no book about human psychology, you know, when it comes to business. You learn that on the job. You know, one moment you have someone who's performing and you teach them everything, then they go get a job somewhere else or they go start their own company that will compete with yours. Uh, that's the reality, you know. Uh, it used to make me so angry, like, I taught you so much, I took you here and I gave you this. Then you realize not everyone's as invested in your vision. People have their own dreams, you know. So I'm very blessed, I think, to have people around me that have, this, that have the same goals and are willing to, to grow with this specific brand, you know. Uh, yeah, so that's why the team, I, I'd say, has changed. Not a lot. The core team is, is the same. But there are those people that were out there known, you know, in sales and marketing that have gone on to venture into other things. Um, and we wish them nothing but the best. Yeah. Let's talk about hypnotic again. <clears throat> now, I want to be more specific. You spoke earlier about depression and things like that. I remember yeah. speaking to you last year and uh, you spoke about making the biggest loss that mm. you made. I think it was two, two years ago. 2016. 2016. Mm. People look at that, don't know that, that, that part of it. You know, they, they, they don't know the hardships that you've gone through in terms of the money that, actual, that actually happens. Mm. And you know, everyone has that question, does hypnotic make money? Yeah. Um, it's a good question. I think when we had the last interview, 2016 was a difficult year because it was the biggest show we did uh, in terms of numbers, in terms of production. It was the first time we really took that step forward, like, okay, we want to be the best in the country. Uh, we don't want any doubt about that. So we saw the numbers grow, but the needs that the consumers had exceeded the revenue they were receiving. Uh, so it, it really hit us hard. Uh, we lost a lot of people in the team because we couldn't afford to pay staff, we couldn't afford to pay suppliers, we were getting sued left, right and center, you know. So I personally, at some point I was like, this just might be the end, you know. Uh, we've showcased such a spectacular event and we can't afford to, to close off these last, you know. At some point we were getting sued for a ridiculous amount, like 20,000. I know that sounds like a lot of money for people, but in context to how much the festival costs, like four million, it's not a lot of money. But now when you can't even find that money within that business, there's a problem. So I had to sit and make those decisions, like will I continue? Will I try to get a new team together? Um, I think those are the moments where you go through those mm -hmm. mental uh, roller coaster rides, you know. Uh, you go through anxiety, you get depressed, you get out of it, you're excited. You get depressed again and you're like, okay. Um, so yeah, I, I'm hypnotic, hypnotic for, for 2016, 2017 didn't make any money. And I think that was the time when we started looking at, if you remember when we launched Hypnotic 2016, we got the government involved. Uh, the Ministry of Arts and Culture, Youth Affairs was here. Uh, we had all these organizations that promised to support, to pay local artists, to pay our production. Uh, and the reason 2017, uh, happened the way it happened is because we financed everything again ourselves. So government didn't pull through, unfortunately. Uh, none of the parastatals pulled through. Just a lot of excuses and that's when I learned that maybe uh, this environment is not where we're going to grow this brand to its full potential. Because now we, uh, we can have a run, we can have a positive press run for two months straight and it always ends with someone getting sued. You know, I think that's not good for us, it's not good for the suppliers, it's not good for the fans, all the artists associated with the brand, you know. I think this year has been our best year in the last three years in terms of the press. We're the ones suing people, you know, at this point, and, and, and we don't want to be those people. We, like Lisa said, we are in this because we love music. We want to create platforms for people to grow in music. We want to grow artists, we want to let the country shine. You know, uh, so yeah, um, I know what your next question will be. So that's that hypnotic, hypnotic definitely made the impact it needed to make in Swaziland. It can still do more. Don't get it twisted. 
but the environment isn't allowing us. Yeah. When you say the environment isn't allowing you, what do you mean? Politics. Um, there are definitely powers that be that uh, are not happy with the progress we made without them. I know it sounds like some Illuminati mm. stuff. It, it exists because we sat in meetings with these people and without giving them control of what we're doing, they threatened to shut us down, which they did uh, technically. In June, we did receive a letter prohibiting Swazi Chai from hosting any events. Um, and we had to stand up and fight. In the middle of releasing the lineup, we were told, you have no venue, you're not allowed to do events in this country, leave. And we were like, oh, can we just have one year where we do this without being stressed? Um, secondly, corporate support. Uh, I was in we were Major League Gardens, they invited us to Major League Gardens this past weekend. We're sitting with the sponsors, Smirnoff and all these companies. And the support is immense from the TV stations all the way to corporate support because it is merely impossible to run at the scale we run at. Uh, we've got over 300 people hired working over two days. You've got chartered flights. You've got over 300 hotel rooms, you know. You, there is no way you can run without financial muscle, you know, uh, which we saw at Major League Gardens. They were, everything was smooth because everything was paid for on time, sponsors on board. In Swaziland, it's like the exact opposite. And I don't understand why our corporates are putting all their eggs in one basket when there's such a huge youth market that is asking, begging for their attention, you know. And Hypnotic was that vehicle. And unfortunately, some took long, some made offers I couldn't accept out of respect for our fans, out of respect for ourselves. Um, and everyone's putting their eggs in this one basket that really doesn't need any more support. And then you have this one thing that's highly influential, growing exponentially. Within seven years, we've grown faster than any festival in this country. Uh, we've, we have 14 media houses reporting. You know, we're making an impact in Europe, in America, with people flying from Australia, but not even 10 rand from any of the corporates. So I had to look at that and look at myself. I was like, maybe I'm the problem in terms of how I'm managing the business, in terms of how I sold the business. Maybe I scared people away. At the same time, the team was going to meetings with me. It was like, no, Sakile, there's nothing we've done wrong up to this point when it, regard, when it comes to this. They just don't want us here. And unfortunately, that's the reality we had to come to terms with recently and go, maybe let's let the people fight for us. Uh, let's take the battle to them let's continue growing in music. Because what it was becoming now, we're gonna start uh, running for MP, we're gonna start going to positions of power to try influence, I'm not interested. We want to make music, distribute music, market music, make money from music, do concerts, have a whole life experience for the rest of our lives. Who feels what about Ezulwini being a town for certain people? We got to that, got into race issues. You know, we're bringing too many black people into Zulini. Can we change that? No, we can't change that. It's hip hop. It resonates with a certain market. Why don't you make, put this type of music so that more people from Zulini can feel comfortable with this festival? It's been running in Zulini for five years. All of a sudden people are uncomfortable. You know, who are these people? And these people came and I was like, they're very brave. So I'm not willing, I'm not trying to get shot right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you scared me because I wanted to go deeper into that. Just Let's get it. Shot? Let's get it. No, I, definitely <laughs> not. I pray, man. You put up a letter from mm. um, the user. Yeah, yeah, people. like one, yeah. Yeah. With several. Some of the complaints, um, what can you say about them? I remember when we had a discussion about them. No, no, the complaints on the letter. Oh, and mm. oh the reason they want to shut down Hypnotic, mm. or the reason they try to shut down Hypnotic, noise pollution mm. and traffic congestion. I think there was something mentioned about grass being destroyed. And that was in the conversation. Out. Yeah, it was not a conversation. That was in the conversation in the meeting. Some lady stood up and said she's scared of burning because our clients smoke and they're going to burn the grass and burn the whole city down. <laughs> I was like, if it's really come down to this, I cannot be in this meeting where we'll use every single excuse to try stop this from happening. Uh, it was bad enough with traffic congestion and noise pollution. It's a festival. And mind you, they are planning a festival themselves. Yeah, so I think they announced it actually. Yeah. I was away, but yeah, I saw it in the newspaper. Uh -huh. Someone sent me that the very same people that are saying hypnotic is not appropriate for that area announced that they will have their own festival 
to mm -hmm. replace mm -hmm. hypnotic in the same area. So it was like, good luck, bro. Okay. We want to talk about why you haven't made such things public, but after this <laughs> channel, right? Yeah, because the story, you have the full story and you've only been given snippets about it. Yep. Uh, we'll be right back. Bye. Yeah, man, we're still out here and we're still talking the journey that has sort of come to an end or a T junction. I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll find out. It's not left. <laughs> um, but anyway, we're, we're, they're leaving this place. So the jive. Guys, just before the, the break or the jam there, we were talking about the forces that be that yeah. uh, tried to stop Hypnotic mm. 2018. Yeah. And I we're can see you guys are trying to be diplomatic about it, you know. Yeah. There was letters, there was meetings, yeah. there was complaints. You yeah. guys are going to burn down the country. You guys yeah. are going <laughs> to... You're going to kill people. Yeah, Apparently, of course. Too many deaths at Hypnotics, one of, of the course. things you said. Right. Um, oh, so I've heard, yeah. yeah I've never, never heard of any deaths. I've yeah. never heard. There's, there's never been one incident within festival parameters that we've had. Uh, so it was shocking to hear all these things from people that don't even know what the festival is or what mm. it stands for. They've never been there. But they're sitting there making decisions. It was like I literally asked, "Have you been? Have you been to hypnotic?" <laughs> no, but I think it's important that no. Mm. Let's watch a YouTube video together yeah. as a group. No Let's robbers. <laughs> I want us to, to to look at it this way. Yeah. Okay. First of all, uh, yes or no? Do you think you're arrogant, Sakili? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes. Okay. Because I want to attribute this to something. We have. Okay. We have festivals, we have people doing a whole lot, you know, in terms of starting something, continuing with something. For instance, um, ticket prices come out for shows all the time. There will be no complaints or, or, or something. Um, sponsorship breakdowns come out. I remember you caught fire once when you said, if you're trying to be a sponsor for Hypnotic, I'm going to need one million. Mm. And that was consumers, look at this boy. Mm. So. The way people perceive you, every every move you make is just. Then there was the AKA thing, mm. you know, uh, the, the whole Twitter spat. So how much of the how much of this this heat can you attribute to the the feeling that Sakila is arrogant? Sakila, Sakila, yeah, no, no, no. Eighty percent of it. Okay. Uh, it's also my fault for not always giving context and just acting out. Uh, and when I make a decision, it always comes across as harsh or you didn't give him a chance or did you even consider this? And it's always, yes, I did consider all these other things. Um, I think the arrogance, as people call it, was my way of protecting my dreams and myself from the world. People will crush you with their opinions. People will crush you with their words, with their feelings, with their vibes. And I was like, how do I cut through all this noise and, and stand out as a young entrepreneur? I need to build walls around me, you know. You know, I need to keep my chin up even when things are tough. I need to I need to talk loud when I talk. I need to be confident. And unfortunately, because of the type of environment we're in, we're a very conservative culture. When you speak to someone, you know, you bow your head, you don't look them in the eye. And then I went to America where it's the exact opposite, where to speak to someone, you look them in the eye and you speak loud, mm -hmm. you know? So there was a culture clash while I was growing this business. Literally the year Hypnotic started, I went to America. And then so while I was learning to be confident, Western standards, this side is like, 
disrespect, arrogant. So I'm very aware of those cultural norms that I went against. I'd walk into a meeting in a boardroom with, you know, board members, uh, CEOs. Uh, you know, I'm not even wearing a suit. I'm wearing Air Force Ones and a dope white tee, and I'm like, I'm not going to accept that offer. <sighs> I'm like, I'm not going to accept that You know, so there's always that. This guy is just going against everything we believe young people should be. Is it acceptable? Is it not? Until this day, I'd say the older people don't know how to treat us. You know, because they'll make the, we've we've rejected offers. Someone offered us half a million once upon a time. We were like, what's that? It's like, huh? These kids are arrogant. How about Wongi? No, it's business. It's a partnership. There's value in what we do. There's value in what you do. We see the value in partnering with you. You see the value in partnering with us. It's not a donation. You know, we came we came from that angle all the time. While there are other people struggling to raise five thousand, ten thousand for their shows, these kids are rejecting a hundred thousand. <sighs> Arrogance. So I can see where they come from. We just won't compromise till this day. Because you know what? When you go to other countries and you have these conversations, you get even more offers. Mm -hmm. And you're like, so what's going on with our environment? Are we making mediocrity a norm? Are we saying that everyone should come down to this standard, which now tells you why there are only two big festivals in this country and one of them is leaving? Uh, now, I want to talk about this. At no point, because you started this, you were still here. Yeah. You went to school in America. Yeah. And you came back. Yeah. After school. Yeah. And all these things are happening. You're 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 being met with um, this negativity negativity or this. Hey, look, I've got five hundred thousand. Take it. Shh. And like, oh, oh, you won't have My, Our fans can actually raise that just from ticket sales alone. Mm. Now, yeah. at no point, because I know I understand that from your perspective, it's you're coming from outside and you're seeing this work mm. outside. You're like, no, but guys, this is what ended so he's like mm. is there a point in time where you you felt maybe you should bend uh there's a time i got sued like a ridiculous amount uh, and everyone was literally looking at me see the thing is everyone's livelihood is depending on these management decisions you have people's salaries people have kids people have homes they have bread to buy and at some point everyone looks at you like sk just take the money just take the money it's going to sort out this issue We'll be fine. Your ego is going to be hurt, but we'll pay off these bills. You know, I've had, I've, I've felt that in meetings. I've, I've seen in their eyes, like, bro, please just take it. Um, yeah. So I, at some point, I did consider bending, and then traveling always helped me get back to my senses. Uh, you know, if given the opportunity, travel as much as you can, so you actually see that how insignificant our system is or how we live is. Just exposing yourself to other cultures, other languages, other people opens up your mind so much as to, then why do we do this this way at home? So you come back and question everything and you, you start seeing gaps, you know? So when those moments would happen where I feel like bending and just conforming to Swazi's standards, I'll call them that, uh, I travel and I come back like, guys, we're not gonna do this. We're not going to become just another company we're not going to become just another other young people that once did something and it was nice. Now, Kumula, 2016, Sunday Hypnotic. I was like, no way. We need to push through this pain. If you need to leave, more than welcome. If you want to stay, let's push through this together. Some people left. So you don't regret at any point not bending? Never. No. Okay. Never. Okay. Uh, because during those moments, there were people watching us. Uh, they wanted to see if we were going to bend. There's some deals we're about to announce that people won't believe, like, you won't even believe. Even I was in the meeting like, oh, I can't even believe this. <laughs> because those people watching us through those moments, like, do these kids have what it takes to be winners? You know? We literally with someone who went to buy a Lamborghini and a Bentley yeah. while they were having a meeting with us. They bought a Bentley. And a Lamborghini. And a Lambo. <laughs> Sorry, I almost forgot the Lambo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but your game, while they were saying, you guys have what it takes to reach that level of human excellence because you've persevered through these moments and you didn't uh, throw your principles away even when it got hard. And we're like, someone was watching. Someone, <laughs> someone was watching. And now we're getting rewarded for that in, in ways I can't even explain. You know what I'm saying? In, in such, for example, in South Africa the last week, we didn't even pay a rent for a hotel because someone that owns 
these properties, let us stay in their place. Because for them, it's an honor that such hardworking young people will stay in their place. So we start getting, we're getting rewards in ways we can't even explain. And we're going into meetings with people we never thought we'd meet. I'm not even talking about celebrities. I'm talking about people that actually own the industry. You understand? And, and the gatekeepers of the industry. The we, mm. They cut the checks. Mm. Now we're about to part, be part of the crew also mm. that cuts the checks. You know what I'm saying? So no regrets, no bending over from us, even moving forward. Yeah. All right then, we'll be right back. We're still out here on the beat down. We're still out here with your boy El Fizzo. Shout out to L.O. and SK. What's up? Because <laughs> that's how they say it, right? Yeah, yeah. L.O. You know, it's a, a Swatini vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to know, how do the folks feel about this journey that you guys have been on? Oh, you know, coming from a traditional country like Sw Swaziland, the kingdom of Swatini, even the name is just so traditional, you know. <laughs> It's, it's tough for them to imagine anything other than getting an office job, 9 to 5, mm. you know, getting a, a Lawyer, bus, doctor. No, doctor. You know, it's very tough because they don't see that here. You know, our environment is very limited to the possibilities we can explore. So they don't see that. So when you come with something from, you know, maybe they think it's from America, or whatever, it's not easy to accept and they just automatically assume you're never going to be anything. So, you know, it's, they try to protect you, but, you know, you just have to persevere through it. But uh, I, I I don't think I don't think you should give up even though even though your parents don't agree. Show yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you don't just tell them. Show them. Mm. They will only start believing when you show them when you work hard. Mm. That's what you know. Parents believe in you. Working hard for your future. For you know, that's that's what you have to do. And for me, it was we even came to a compromise. I studied uh, recording arts, which is audio engineering and you know audio technologies and networking. So that was the compromise we came to. It was fine, go to school, but I'll study what I love, mm -hmm. you know, in order to develop my skills further and actually be a professional in the industry. So we have to, we, there is a compromise that you have to meet with them, you know, it can't always be your way. Because I think, I think most parents just want to be able to say, hey, look, I tried my best, I sent him to school. Yeah. It's all on him now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah it's, 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 it's real. As soon as, yo, I got cut off, as soon as I landed, <laughs> I, I remember in South Africa I landed not before I even came to Swaziland. I got cut off immediately. I got sat down. You're on your own. Yeah, in some lobby in some hotel. There's like so funzi. Time to ask. Yeah, I'm done. You good? Shook my hand. All right, he bounced. He left. <laughs> left me there. You know. So I've I've had you know, yeah. And it's not a tough lesson. It's just you know, they just told me I had to stand on my own. You know, that that's very important. You, get, you have to be pushed, you know, because you're not going to do it if you're always comfortable. You, know, you have to get rid of the comfortability of your home, everything, your support structure, and just do it. Yeah. That's it, Bungambu. Stay in school. Mm. Uh, something I struggled with from high school, starting, started making money at a young age, had this brand that was catching on with people, I was getting popular within the perimeters of the school. And I was like, I don't, I, you know, I'm cool enough to sell a brand and make, make so much money. 
I don't need school. And my, my dad sent me down specifically to say, if you really want to pursue business, you'll need more knowledge. At the time I was a C student even. I wasn't paying attention in class. Uh, by the time I did IB, the challenge was even bigger now because we were recording music and people were buying into this culture. And we, we started doing shows like Headcount. So we're making even more money. I'm like, I don't, I don't need the, the French class, to be honest. <laughs> you know? yeah, French, college was the yeah. worst. I think college was... Like Palais for money, Papa. Yeah, yeah <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah, college was worse because now everyone there is making decisions about who they want to be. Mm. And I already knew who I was. I, worked in, I went to college and I was already a businessman and everyone was like, I don't know if I want to do psychology <laughs> or like if I want to do like a science. Or, and I was like, business. And mm. they used to say, Sakila, why have you made up your mind? You, you know, feel free to change. And I'm like, I know what I want to be. And I hated being in an environment like that where it was okay not to know what you want to be. You know, and I wanted to be out. Uh, and you know, it was very close. I almost never finished. Uh, so me posting about me getting a degree was actually very monumental. It was basically me saying I'm free, uh, I, I will do everything it takes, and that was only last year. Uh, so this year was the first time I did any work without having school disturb me, disturb me, <laughs> you know. Just to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay guys, uh, before we run out of time on the show, I want us to get to the integrities. It's what I introduced, but we haven't really spoken about it. What's happening? Today is the last interview. We've deemed this the last interview <clears throat> at the Swazi Jive headquarters. Yeah. What is happening? Why are you leaving here? Okay, I didn't really explicitly say this in my post. Uh, Hypnotic is leaving the country. Uh, we have a few offers in uh, our neighboring countries that we're still considering. Uh, Swazi Jive as an office. We're going to run the office from that country, whichever country we're operating our festival properties in, because that's what the offices are mostly used for. Uh, supply management, all the meetings, we'll go to that country. What will remain in this country are our studios. So we're launching La Lela Music. Some of you know about it. It's a music streaming service and an online radio service. It will have its own studio in the country. Um, we're also going to have a music studio for our artists that are Swati in the country. Otherwise, Swazi Jive at the moment will continue doing memorabilia like t-shirts and stuff to remember the years, but it doesn't look like we're going to be doing anything more than that in Swaziland. So this was the last hypnotic in the country? Yes. Damn. How do you guys feel about that, Lo? I almost cried. <laughs> it's heartbreaking a little bit, but it's, you know, change change is always like that you know it does not it doesn't always feel good but sometimes it is good for you, you know, so that's 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 how i see this yeah. in the interview last year yeah you spoke about how and I, I know at the time you were speaking from a point of growth you know that hypnotic or you're thinking of branching out of the country and now you're doing this i'm actually doing it but it's, uh, is it in the same it's, it's not in the same Definitely a different energy behind yeah. it. But God always puts me in a position where I get really uncomfortable with what I have and where I am to grow me. So I don't ever see it as a negative thing. I feel like all those people were sent to force me to grow. They thought they were burying us and killing us. Like, yeah, you can't have it here. And then I was forced to reach out to people in other places where they were like, you're more than welcome. We have all the money. We'll pay you 10 times what they offer. <laughs> I'm like, oh. Without that push, without that negativity, without that hate, that's what people think they're doing, uh, I would have never looked beyond the borders. So I'd like to say thank you for making us superstars. Why does your face say, look at me now? <laughs> <laughs> look at me now. <laughs> because when we announce these deals, it's going to be such a big lesson for those kids, man, that, that follow us. There were so many kids that were heartbroken. I was trying to post as many messages on my Instagram, on my, on my Twitter as possible because people were genuinely hurt, people were crying, people came here to say, please don't. And the lesson in that is that the pain is not, it's not supposed to kill anything. Uh, let's grow together. It just means now maybe taking a shot to, to get to hypnotic. Uh, but we believe in that brand that much that it can shift uh, without losing that, that loyal support. Okay. Hey, we'll be right back to wrap up the interview and hear any other things that they can you know, give a sneak peek into what to look forward to from the Swiss Jive camp. We'll be right back.
Probably one of my favorite episodes, and it's oh. come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> it's come to an end, just like the hypnotic festival in Nesotin. It's still such a profound statement to hear, um, especially after the run that it's had. Um, I'm here with Lo and SK. Guys were seem very upbeat about the future. Obviously, a bit emotional about where we're at now and how things where we where things have ultimately come to but the future looks bright yeah yeah the future looks good well what are some of the things that you guys want to be remembered for long oh we're killing the game <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know i've even heard some people when uh comparing just eavesdropping you know i probably shouldn't have been doing that but <laughs> uh, i heard some people comparing uh to few musicians and artists in swaziland and then they didn't mention us and then one of the guys like but what about them like no but those guys are it's a different league. Yeah, it's a different. Yeah, it's a different league. I was like, oh, okay. I guess some people do recognize the impact and you know how much we push. You know, so we we're gonna come out on top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So at least we're leaving at the peak. Yeah. yeah so I don't, I don't mind that. I don't mind. Some fun memories, Sakile. Uh, lots of fun memories. Uh, I I rather talk about what I'd like us to be remembered for. Uh. And that's love. Like we showed so much love uh, to people even when they didn't support us. Mm -hmm. We showed love to music in this country even when the industry didn't exist. You know, we showed so much love to each other when we had no money, and and all these things were just dreams. And and that's one thing I'd encourage maybe the young person that's watching to always remember that that's the only reason we're still here today. You know, we showed so much love. God is love, and, and I see, that the more I grow, the more I see that in everything that we do, the way we support each other emotionally, financially. Uh, when someone has something in the team, they'll share. If I have something, I'll share. That's the reason Swazi Jive is what it is today, uh, understanding each other, loving each other. And I, I really wish that's what was always on the forefront. I think the controversial stories, the drama, who left who, what did AKA say? Do you see Sakila's tweets? They all remember that and miss the point that I started a business at 16 and shook the country within nine years. Literally, I would walk into the ministry and be like, where's the, I need to see him, now. where's the minister? He's late, you know what I'm saying? Uh, which I don't think has ever been done before. I was in cabinet meetings speaking on behalf of the youth before I launched the National Youth Summit. I don't think that's ever been done before. That's purely because of the love young people showed us and the love we showed them. It's such a genuine connection that we have so much confidence in that we could take this brand anywhere in the world. Swazi Jive Music is playing in Michigan. Yeah. There are people playing our music in Chicago. There are people that are hoping that Hypnotic comes to Vegas. 
that's crazy for me that there are people in Las Vegas where there's a party Monday to Sunday <laughs> that are saying, bro, if you could just bring Hypnotic here, it would be wild. Like, why you need Hypnotic? You got 50 Cent and Mariah mm -hmm. Carey and, you know, Justin Bieber down the road. They're like, nah, we need what you guys do. That's all because of the love uh, people from Swaziland have shown us, uh, all the support. Uh, I'll never forget this one moment. I think that should be my ending statement. When I walked into a shop to check on our sales, and a kid was paying for their VIP ticket with five rand coins. Mm. They were saving from the previous year, not eating uh, their break time money so that they could come to the next hypnotic, you know? That was such a moment for me that I've created something that this person has invested so much love in that they're willing to sacrifice their food. I don't think I've ever sacrificed food for anything. <laughs> so that's why it was so special. But yeah, man, uh, it's been a lot of love. It's definitely not the end. We're not. No one's dying. No. So this will continue and there are going to be so many great things that we do in other aspects that the industry needs. Mm. I think the music streaming and radio and the charts, yes. an official charting system, is probably the most important thing to organize the industry. But if people want to see Hypnotic continue, it has to leave. Yeah. Speaking of Hypnotic leaving, so I have leaving the headquarters, mm. what's happening with Sky Lounge? Sky Lounge, uh, we, we actually had a meeting with Swazi Plaza Properties. It will continue. Okay. Uh, the, uh, we're about to sign a very lucrative deal with, with Swazi Plaza. Uh, they were very happy with, with our the target, targeted market and what it's bringing to the capital. Let's not forget that Mbaban is our capital city, mm -hmm. but there's hardly anything going on except for one venue, you know. Uh, so we, ha we have corporates actually calling us to say they have clients from France. Can, we, can they go to Sky Lounge? So there's a huge demand for it. It will continue. Whether we will be on the ground running, it's something we're still deciding. But I think people have seen that uh, our work will remain consistent, even if Sakila's face is, is not there, you know. Uh, that's, that's what the business is growing into. Franchise, franchise money. Mm -hmm. Everything being franchised. <laughs> Fellas, thanks for coming through. Uh, or oh, actually, thanks for having us here. Things to look okay. out for is that book and a project from Load the Musician. Yeah, yeah, look out for, hey, yeah. Ooh, yeah, I got some. Some nice stuff coming. And you know it's good when he's blowing like he's you know, <laughs> I was just listening to it the other day, we were like, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, and look out for La Lela music. If okay. uh anyone wants to be involved with La Lela, uh, whether hit us being up. a radio presenter, whatever, hit us up. You know, we want to employ as many uh, people from Eswatini in this industry as possible. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so hit us up, send us send us whatever you think you can send us. Where do we'll they listen. send it? Anyway. So yeah, the drive at Gmail. Which other? Our yeah. website will have a link. Yeah. But swazijive at gmail.com. Okay. Swazijive at gmail.com. Yeah. Uh, when is the book coming out? The Making of a Billionaire, early 2019. Okay. That's where all these stories will come together. Okay. Uh, I've actually been inspired by this interview to put out the pre-order link today. So as soon as this camera shuts, I'm going on my Facebook and I'm putting out a link so people can start buying. There's so much demand for a young black man's story. I'm even under pressure. I'm like, what if it's not as interesting as I thought it would be? You know, but uh, early 2019, we'll have hard copies of the book. Uh, we're still negotiating with publishers right now. We're deciding if we'll self-publish it or use a publishing agent uh, so we get proper distribution. I'm learning about writing. This is my first book. Uh, apparently, I'm good at writing, so let's see what the numbers say. Mm. Yeah, but the making of a billionaire, um, I'm glad people finally get it. We're not talking about money, we're talking about mindsets, perseverance, mm -hmm. attitudes towards your work, professionalism. One of the, the things you said that, uh, shout out to people when you said, uh, I'm a billionaire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I'm <laughs> But I am though. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, thank you so much for your time. I'm personally excited for the next step of your journey. Thank you. Uh, and I thank you. hope I'll be getting constant uh, scoop, it's con constant updates on Scoop. To say wherever, we, on. wherever we are, the beat down is welcome. We'll yeah. Fly the whole team to Switzerland or you something. <laughs> Five minute interview. You said it on camera, so I can sue you now. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's called a gentleman's agreement. I got you. It holds I up got the court. Yeah. Tell us all the best for the future. Thank you so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, it is low. It is SK. It's your boy Al Fizzle. Remember on Facebook, it's The Beat Down on Facebook. And on Twitter, it's at The Beat Down TV. If you're looking for me, it's at IMLFO on Instagram, at IMLFO on Twitter. 
and Ofo on Facebook. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Remember, Jesus is King. God loves you. I love you. Peace. Send my chalila in. Send my tegele. Aba se basen jeka. You know where I be.